Bella. Poor Bella. <laughs> oh, come on, Peter. Hi, guys. Uh, damn, some tough acts to follow. Um, yeah, I'm better with that on the stand. Um, I didn't mean in any dirty way, Jesus Christ, not today. <laughs> so, um, actually, I'm going to start with a piece from Flipping Filipinos in America. For all of you who are at CUNY's, be sure you should definitely take Louis Francia's Filipino American Literature class at Hunter. It kicks serious ass. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, just leave it somewhere, honey, please. <laughs> So, um, this, find it. This is a spoken word piece by one of my favorite Filipino American spoken word artists. His name is Reggie Cabico. And the piece is called You Bring Out the Writer in Me. You bring out the writer in me. Your breasts are couplets. Your body is a sonic. Your thoughts share my soliloquy. Your kiss is imagery. Your eyes are, are, are iambic. Your tongue is trochaic. Your touch is stream of consciousness. Your complexity is Elliot. Your neck is Steinbeck. Your stubble is cacophony. Your presence is from fantasy. Your brilliance is Ashbury. Your ass is assonance. Your penis is epic. Your torso is a tanka. Your rambling is a renga. Your fucking is foreshadowing. Your sighs are the climax. Your orgasms are onomatopoeia, onomatopoeia, onomatopoeia. Your clinging is sexton. Your ejaculation is sprung rhythm. Your testicles are testaments. Your backbones are stanzas. Your view is omnipotent. I see you in epilogue. Going, going, gone. I'm gonna do a piece of mine now. Now, uh, huh? What? Down, Jason, not here. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell Caitlin I swear to God. <laughs> so, I wrote this piece on a really shitty morning when I had to commute from Sunnyside to Hunter. I call it a recipe for breakfast on a Manhattan morning. And um, for those of you who know I can cook, you'll see just how easily that fits into this. For a recipe, or for a breakfast on a Manhattan morning, you will need five cups of coffee blacker than the three men you shook the night before, 40 to 60 milligrams of Ritalin to taste, Nourishment of some kind. One carton of Tropicana NYOJ, optional. Two bottles of five hour energy, one reserved, and the near constant prayer of three elderly Filipino women. Step one, in a large pitcher over ice, mix coffee and Ritalin with your favorite creamer. Popular choices include Bailey's, Kahlua, or my favorite, Chocolate syrup mixed with straight Everclear. <laughs> Stir vigorously until the mixture is cold enough to numb the collective hangovers from the past two days. <laughs> Inhale through a straw or pour directly into your slack-jawed mouth. <laughs> Step two. With your pitcher or ungodly thermos in hand, stumble into a morning street cart to acquire your preferred means of self-nourishment such as a double sausage, egg, and cheese on a roll, or break into the nearest retirement home for a morphine bag in the Capri Sun straw. <laughs> Be sure to pick up some Tropicana NYOJ to make, to hork down your solid breakfast, 
or to make a morphine cocktail in a very good morning New York sort of way. Step three, chug the first bottle of five hour energy. Do not think about the taste. Just swallow, shudder until the moment of what the hell did I just drink passes and regret your decision later. <laughs> like many other things you swallow. Step four. They say things like, I pray for you every day. Or, don't forget to go to mass. For the umpteenth time this week. Remember that their constant prayers may be why you have keeled over and choked in a pool of your own opiate laced vomit. <laughs> and that you won't get Metro card money if you piss them off. <laughs> Step five. Repeat procedure every weekday morning for another 22 years as needed. For fun lunch ideas, please see recipes for while you're undergoing dialysis. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone want you guys? Alright, so um, this is a piece that isn't quite as funny as the other two. Um, although it is about sex, like almost everything else I write, um, and say, uh, <laughs> I wrote this, um, because of a guy, as I'm sure many of you ladies can relate to, or men, um, and I call it, Contemplations on the Morning After. Do you remember when I touched you and the world reverberated with your climax. You calling me Guya, concealing your fluorescent red glow behind clenched fingertips as you clawed your way into me, as my tongue grazed your teeth, as my lips searched for your carotid artery. Why aren't you holding me anymore? I tried to give all I was to heal the broken man haunting the shadows beneath your eyes. Why couldn't I be the one? Thank you. Come on, let's give it up more!